Hi, welcome to my blog. Uh, today I'm not going to do uh, how I see it. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about negative automatic thoughts or NATs. Or you could say NATs if you want, but I like saying NATs, you know, those pesky little thing, you know, except it doesn't have the G on it. It's like those pesky little things in your face. Well, NATs are pesky little thoughts in your head. Uh, negative automatic thoughts. These are things like, I'm a failure. I'm worthless. I'm ugly. Um, everybody hates me. Um, I'm a sorry excuse for a human being. I'm a horrible person. Um, as you can see today, I kind of went out for you guys that don't watch. <laughs> um, I'm a little bit less no maintenance today. I straightened my hair. It's just a little thing. Sometimes that little thing, I mean, when I walked out of my room, my husband, you know, immediately said, why are you all dressed up? Why are you so pretty? And I was like, oh, you know, I just straightened my hair. I just bought a straightener. Um, so anyway, um, the negative automatic thoughts, uh, everybody has them, but people with mental illnesses tend to have them more often and it tends to affect so much of your life it affects your depression level your anxiety your stress um because you get into this spiral of feeling bad about yourself so what i'm going to talk about today is a way to to hopefully turn that around for you um, I'm going from, a, a CBD, uh, not CBD, CVT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy manual, um, to, to say, you know, ask yourself questions. Uh, uh, CBT often says the, the ABC of things, you know, work it out. Um, the ABCs is A is the, um, activating event or trigger b is the belief which is what you believe is happening and c is the consequences the consequences of that belief um which consequences is also the emotions that you feel it's the consequences of the trigger the belief and then there's the consequence which you know like somebody called me a bitch that's the trigger you think whatever you're gonna think um let's say you think how dare she you know she's disrespecting me so the consequence is that you're now angry another consequence is that you knock the shit out of that person or you say it back or you um or you walk away, depending on how things are. Me, I walk away. That's the consequence. Because I'm like, I don't like confrontation. Because um, my belief is, I done fucked up. <laughs> if somebody calls me that. Or, what did I do? What did I do? Oh no. What have I done? And then I just feel awkward. Um, a C, confused, you know, um, and we all handle those things differently. That's, that's one of the things that you learn when you, when you read about CBT is that there's, there's typical reactions, but being atypical, having an atypical reaction is just based on who you are as a person and your experiences and your conditioning or your programming you know however you want to say it you know your life well my programming was always to walk away walk away shove that down don't think about it you know if it's uncomfortable don't think about it don't mess with it so so once you've had the a b and c happen um at some point, you're supposed to look at that and think 
about it because a lot of times B is going to be an automatic negative thought, which in my case, the automatic negative thought is I done fucked up or what I do wrong, you know, to blame myself for actions happening. Um, some people might think, oh man, I done lost another friend. I'm such a failure. And you feel heartbroken. Somebody else, <laughs> you know, would get mad. I mean, I think the typical reaction is to get mad. Um, and maybe they catch a charge because they knock the shit out of somebody and then the cops come. Who knows? Maybe you get your ass whooped because that person was not to be fucked with. There's consequences to the actions. Um, but um, anytime you feel a negative automatic thought, and, and this could be just, you know, these things pop out of the blue for, for a lot of us with mental disorders. It doesn't really take an activating event. We can just be sitting and, or we can just be walking past a mirror and a negative thought hits us. We can be taking a bath and a negative thought hits us. You know, there's, there's always something. So once you've had the negative thought, um, if it's about a situation, you say, am I jumping to the worst possible conclusion? A lot of people catastrophize things like, oh no, I've completely ruined this friendship, this relationship. It's completely over. Oh my God. Oh my God. And it may not be all that. It may not. Your perception could be messed up as to what that means. You know, that person could just be telling you that at that particular moment, you're acting like a bitch. So maybe it's not as bad as you thought. Maybe you haven't lost this person forever. Of course, when you react to the consequences, you just might. <laughs> so sometimes it's best not to react to, to what you're feeling, to just walk away. And then analyze it later before you've made a big mistake. Um, there's also, am I thinking in extremes, like in extreme all or nothing terms, like the black and white thinking, like if they call me that, do I automatically go to, well, they're a piece of shit. I hate them. They're horrible. You know, um, because that's also a, a, a thing. We put people on a pedestal or we hate them. You know, they're horrible. Um, I've often said to people, if somebody doesn't like me and it upsets me, I just start listing in my head all the ways that they suck. So it, that's the, the black and white, all or nothing thinking. You're, I either love you or I hate you. Um, another question to ask yourself, am I predicting the future instead of waiting to see what happens, which is a fortune telling type of, of question, you know, like them calling me that does not mean that they hate me. It's not the end of the relationship necessarily. Um, obviously if it's a stranger, this, this dialogue does not work. I'm using this as like somebody who, you know, and, and kind of like, um, another question to ask Am I jumping to conclusions about what other people are thinking of me? Um, in this situation, you know, are, are they saying I am a bitch or I'm being a bitch? Um, a lot of times we will hear words like stupid and maybe not catch you're being stupid or them saying that's stupid that, you know, and you're, and when you hear, even if you hear you are being stupid, to put that in your head, they think I'm stupid. You are mind reading. You know, you're trying to tell yourself what they're thinking. You can't know what, what a person's thinking. Even when they're talking to you, you cannot know what they're thinking exactly in terms of what they think of you. I mean, even if you ask a person, what do you think of me? You don't necessarily know if what they're saying is true. 
which leads into the mental filtering question, which is, am I focusing on the negative and overlooking the positive? Like when they said, yeah, bitch, you know, am I hearing you bitch when they're saying, oh, shut up, you bitch, you know, am I filtering out their inflection? Am I filtering out you are being a in to where I only hear you're a bitch, you're a bitch, you're horrible, you're worthless, you know, am I missing out on you're such a bitch, but I love you. Am I missing the, but I love you? Um, a lot of us will filter out the good thing and focus on the bad or filter out the bad thing and focus on the good. Either way, if you're not hearing the whole thing, you're only part of half the conversation. Another question to ask yourself, am I globally putting myself down as a failure, worthless or useless, which is called labeling? Um, you can't really label people. I mean, it's, we are so many things that we can't just be one thing. Uh, we're not a hundred percent good. We're not a hundred percent bad. We are multifaceted, intriguing people. No matter how dull somebody seems, they are multifaceted and intriguing. When you take the time to ask. And, and notice. Another question to ask yourself is, am I listening too much to my negative gut feelings instead of looking at the objective facts, which is called emotional reasoning? Um, so if I feel like I'm a horrible person, you know, am I just going with that and thinking, oh, they, they see me as a horrible person. They're, that's why they're calling me this. That's why they're saying this to me. It's because I'm a horrible person. I'm, I'm horrible. I'm absolutely horrible. Another question to ask is, am I taking an event or someone's behavior too personally or blaming myself and overlooking other factors like personalizing, which that would be, um, to my understanding, are they saying I'm a horrible person? They don't want to be my friend. They hate me. You know, it, it's all about me. Me. I'm the only bitch in the world. I'm horrible. There's nobody else like me. There's nobody else who's more bitch than me. Um, another question is, am I using words like should, must, ought, and have to in order to make rigid rules about myself, the world, or other people, which is called demanding. Um, you know, what standards am I holding myself to, you know, and, and how am I talking about myself? You know, I must be better. I ought to not piss people off. I have to make people happy. I should be doing better in this world, you know, um, and, and on the flip side, it could, could be, you know, you, you're looking at somebody else and thinking they should be nicer to me. There must be something wrong with them. They ought to like me. They have to do what I want them to, you know. Um, another question to ask is, am I telling myself that something is too difficult or unbearable or that I can't stand it when actually it's hard to bear, but it is bearable and worth tolerating, which is a low frustration tolerance. Uh, some of us don't want to work at things. So even if that person is coming at me like you're such a fucking bitch, you know, Am I just going to walk, am I just going to completely walk away without fighting for that friendship, for that relationship, or am I going to say, you know what, people fight. We have disagreements. Everything will be okay. You know, sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes you can't fix things. I mean, sometimes it's just the way it is. Like, like if it's a stranger saying that to you, 
that is what it is, <laughs> you know, um, and, and that doesn't really matter to me. A stranger, a stranger's opinion is not as lasting as somebody who you give a shit about. Okay, now, outside of triggered events that happen, when you're sitting at home and you're thinking, I'm a failure, I suck at everything, I'm ugly, I'm fat, I'm hideous, I'm stupid, try to ask yourself these questions. And if you have trouble with these questions, like if you're just really in that down, downward spiral, um, ask people whose opinion you respect, ask people that also keep these thoughts in mind to look at when you're in a better space to answer these questions for yourself. When you're in a good mood, look over that thought and say, can I prove that my thought is a hundred percent accurate? Is it true? What are the effects of thinking this way? How does this thought make me feel? Is my thought completely logical or sensible? You know, like, am I the ugly, I'm the ugliest person in the world. No, there's no ugliest. There's no prettiest. It's all subjective. Would people whose opinion I respect agree that this thought's realistic? What evidence against what evidence exists against this thought? Um, you know, you can look at, sometimes you have to go back. You can say, well, in school, I made good grades. I made straight A's. Okay, then you're not stupid. You can learn. Um, is my thought balanced or extreme? You know, going straight to, I'm ugly that's an extreme. But saying, I don't like my nose, or my lips are too thin. You know, that's kind of balanced to say, I don't like my lips. I think my lips are ugly. Well, still using ugly is extreme. But to say, I don't like is, is a more balanced, you know, I don't like my lips, but I do like my eyes. Is my thought rigid or flexible? Um, do I always feel this way? Or is it just right now? Is it just right now that this is bothering me? And could somebody change my mind and make me feel better about myself? Or is it, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Leave me alone. You're lying to me. This is the truth. You know, am I thinking objectively and realistically or are my thoughts being based on how I feel? A lot of our negative thinking really takes hold when we just feel down. When something happens that, that we just feel like, why me? Why, why can't things be better? Or I got dumped or I lost my job. Um, or I just feel like crap or I'm stressed so I naturally feel down um, another way to tackle gnats is to generate alternatives for each of your unhelpful thoughts, attitudes, and beliefs um, what's a more helpful way of looking at the situation. Um, my friend's calling me a bitch. Have I said something to hurt her? Is she having a bad day? And she's got a low tolerance for stuff. Maybe she misunderstood me. You know, d did I say something that 
sounded offensive or um or did I invalidate her feelings? You know, was I insensitive to her pain or her struggle? Do I encourage friends to think this way? You know, if I'm insulted, do do I encourage that? Um, I'm not entirely sure about that one. When I'm feeling okay, how do I think differently? This is why it's important to, um, lock down when you're feeling bad, put it on the pad. And then when you're feeling better, look at it, think about it. And remember when I was feeling better, I disagreed with that thought. Have any past experiences shown me that another possible outcome exists? Um, a lot of times just thinking about stuff will tell you that other possible outcomes exist. There's always different choices to make, different words to say, different actions to take. Um, just different things altogether. What's a more flexible or less extreme way of thinking? What's a more realistic or balanced way of thinking that takes into account the evidence that does not support my thought? And what do I need to think in order to feel and act differently? I think one of the main things that, that I can say that a person needs to think in order to feel and act differently is... that not everything is your fault and people have shit days they do shit things and and that's that's all there is to it you know give them cut a person some slack cut yourself some slack that everybody has bad days and on these bad days you say and do things that you ain't proud of Things that you end up having to apologize for. Everybody has them. So when somebody says something and it makes you mad, sad, um, frustrated, forgive them. Walk away. Say to yourself, Perhaps they just need a reset. You know, uh, my daughter has them all the time. When she has a really, really bad day, once she goes to sleep and wakes up the next day, she's, she's better. And she's got a lot to apologize for. Um, but I don't because I don't say, I don't react to what she's saying because I tell myself that it's not personal. She is having a bad day and doesn't mean half of what she says. She can't control it. She wants to hurt everybody the way she's hurting or the way she perceives that we've hurt her by making her do something she doesn't want to do because she's having a bad day. So give people you know, when you start to have these thoughts and you think, I'm going to say something back, I'm mad. If you walk away, go home and think about it and think that comment, that disrespect, that insensitivity that they made towards me might just be, it might have nothing to do with me. They are just irritated and they are lashing out at everybody. Plain and simple. So we got to stop those gnats. <laughs> stop the gnats. All you have to do is recognize it. And you can run experiments. You know, have have people who you love and respect. Who are going to be honest with you. Which I know that it's kind of hard to, to um, trust that honesty. Because... We feel so negative that we figure there's no way they're going to tell us we're horrible people. So you have to be careful about how you word things. Like if you were going to take a survey, 
you know, maybe you would say, I am moody. You know, and, and whether they agree or disagree, you know, I have strength. You know, please list, please list my strengths. And let me tell you, sometimes it is hard. I mean, not, not the reading because that's, that's actually an easy part. But like for my daughter, if we were to list her strengths, it's it's difficult at times because because she is very moody she is very combative she is very disrespectful but I would put things down because I love her and even though she annoys me don't put anything about on there about what would you change about me of course I mean you could you could because I mean chances are what they would change about you is not the things that you're really having negative thoughts about. You know, they're not going to write stuff like, well, you should get a nose job, you know, or you should work out because you're too fat. No, they're not going to write that stuff down. Your loved ones are not going to point out things like that. They're going to point out things like um, you could listen more, you know, if you're somebody who doesn't, hear things right or they could say you could um be more understanding you know um you could be more communicative before you blow up you know there's there are there are helpful things that your family members can tell you about yourself and like I said for the most part they're not going to tell you you could be smarter You know, um, they're not going to say stuff like that. They're not going to say, you know, your weaknesses, you've got a low IQ, you're stupid, you're worthless. No, they're not going to say that. They're going to, they're going to come up with strengths and weaknesses that you don't often think about. And and chances are your negative automatic thoughts are not going to be on their list. So remember that every time you think something bad. You know, try to try to think of what people would say about you. And if you do, if you really think that they're going to say something negative, come up with a list of ways that you could describe a person and ask your mother, your siblings, your friends, your children, your spouse to tick off the things that are your strengths out of a list that you make. To tick off the things that you feel are your weaknesses and that they can tick off. It's it's a really simple experiment, but you have to be willing to look at what they've said and and try to work on it. But see, the thing is, is once you know it's a problem, you can talk to your therapist about it. You can actively work on changing that about yourself, which will make you a better friend, a better family member, um, and... And it will help with your relationships in terms of there's a lot less drama because you stop doing something that's making you weak. And when there's less drama, you have a better opportunity of being happy. So that's my video on Nat's negative automatic thinking. Thank you.